In 1977, a young man by the name of Steve Kinzer first climbed into a sprint car in America. That young man, aided by his cousin Carl, has now swept to victory in every major event in the fair shores of the United States. Seven, seven, yes, seven world championships, 157 main feature events, and many, many other USAC and other events this man has won. Tonight here at Winfield Speedway Park, we are graced with the presence of his royalty. And believe me, to the Speedway fans throughout Australia, and especially in America, he is the nearest thing to royalty they'll ever come to see. You, along with me, are going to absolutely be thrilled by the racing of both Steve and his brother, Randy Kinzer, here tonight at Winfield Speedway Park. Sit back and enjoy what I will assure you will be a magnificent night of racing, and immediately let us go and see what they've all got to say about it. This would be a class field tonight, wouldn't it? Oh, of course. They're all here. Max Dunsey's here, and uh, uh, Gary's here, and the Americans are here. Uh, Ian Lewis was here from Melbourne, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it'll be a good race. You know the Kinsers fairly well. Have you raced against them before? I've raced against uh, Steve myself in America, um, but that's it. I, I, that's all I've, I've raced him in America, but I've never raced either one of them in Australia. Uh, how do you find their style? Enviable? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, most Americans are, are very good because um, that's what they do, they're, they're professional drivers. But, uh, you know, Steve Kinzer, with the things he's done, I guess he, he would be one of the exceptions. You know, he's uh, unbelievable. Um, with some of the things I've seen him do, and also Randy, uh, Randy Kinzer, you know, a typical Clint, uh, Kinzer driver, you know. Just... What's the difference between their driving and Australian driving, do you think? Apart from just professionalism, is it that they don't make mistakes? What is it? What... Experience, that's, that's all it is. These guys in Australia um, can spend, could spend the same amount of money on equipment and, and uh, everything you name. They could, and if they had the money, they'd spend it, and a lot of them really do spend as much as what the Americans do. It's just that, you know, uh, the Americans race five times a week and uh, we work five days a week. Now they've got, definitely got the experience, like if uh, they're in the States and they're running three and four nights a week, we're only, you know, well this week we're getting a couple of nights in and last week we got a couple of nights in, but um, that's what you've got to do, you just got to keep going around and uh, improve your position. How do you think Brad Lacey will go against them? Oh, he, he should go very well, you know, like uh, he, he's dialed in uh, very quick, you know. Um, but I mean, then again, experience, you know, it's, uh, that's his life, um, it's a full-time job for him and, uh, you know, we're only part-timers. Could you tell us a little bit about, about your life during the season in the U.S.? During the season in the U.S., I basically run mostly on weekends and usually around a three-state area, so I'm not living out of a motor home like, say, for instance, Steve will, but I do my fair share of traveling and it's just pretty well prepare all week for the weekend races and we'll run three to four times a week. Do you have to keep fairly fit to do this? Well, you know, there's a lot of guys that don't go at the physical point, but I think you do. I, I jog or run, whatever you want to call it. I try to do two miles a day at least four times a week, and then I do good exercise. I help Dad do a little masonry work, which keeps my upper body fit. And I think uh, to be an excellent driver, or what I call excellent driver, you've got to be fit, yes. And um, what do you think of the Australian uh, competition? Tell us about that. Well, actually, last year it seemed like there was, you know, we had not very much problems at first. Other than, you know, they did give us a run. It seemed like as the race went on, we, we would get a little bit more faster, and, and they were staying about the same speed, maybe because we're used to run 40 lap races, and, and here they don't run that many laps. And then this year it seemed like, you know, we didn't have a chance to build new engines, and these guys all got together and said, we're going to do something about this year. And, and they've all spent their money well on some good aluminum engines, and uh, they gave us a hard way to go the first couple of times. And this is a track here where you can definitely use a lot of horsepower, so it would be questionable how good we can do this year. I, I think we'll be all right, but you just never know. Standard of cars is excellent. Like, we've got the world's best here and his brother, so it should be an excellent race. It's sort of, actually, I've been really looking forward to coming racing against Steve here on this track because it, this is probably one of the best tracks in Australia to go racing on. So if everything works good and everything being equal, it should be a hell of a good race tonight. A lot of people are saying that the, the difference between the Kinsers and the Australians is experience. Is that, that what you feel? Experience and um, born ability. Like, Steve Kinsers just got born ability. Like, he just 
stepped in a race car and started winning, like whereas and, he, and then he got better. Whereas everyone here is sort of good, but there's only a certain amount of people in the world can be excellent, and Steve's one of them. Do you think that uh, you will try to make the running, or do you wait for them to make mistakes? I'll run them. Do a race. Like this, this sort of racetrack, you don't have to wait for anyone to make a mistake on you. If you're faster, you go past them. The Bartles Sprint Car Invitation, the first race of the night for the Wandering Wing Wonders as they come around. There is 10 laps up on the board. Max Duff, the South Korean champion, going up the front row in car number five from Victoria. And let's watch him in the turn number one. The weather here for summer in Adelaide has been absolutely atrocious. We have had a downpour 10 minutes before this race, and you wouldn't believe the track is looking super quick, thanks to the great work of the staff here at Winfield Speedway Park. But the motor race is already stretched out. The leader is car number five. In the back straight there on your picture is Max Dumsney, the South Australian champion, now residing in New South Wales, driving the OTR house car under the Black Magic banner and looking good. Second place, second generation racer, Terry Wiggs on car number 88. Here we are further back in the field, back to about fifth and sixth place where the battle is as we pick up the second place guy down the back chute, Terry Wiggsall. Born and bred right here in Adelaide, son of Bill Wigsell, and need I say anything about that great racer of the dirt waves. The field now starting to spread out, but we can see some action coming up in the minors. Back in fourth position, we have a challenge, and this is the guy who's throwing it out. It's Zeke Agars in car number three. The man in front of him is car number 33 from the same state of South Australia, Chaz Calandra. Main straight away, the battle between the two. Agars dives, having a go here as we pick up the leader. Dumsday, I'll tell you how fast he's going. There is Wayne Bunker, and if he goes past Bunker, he will have put a lap on him. There is five laps remaining, four and a half in fact for the leader, and they're halfway through this journey. Down they go past us now. Bunker starting to get his act together. Maybe a little slow off the back mark there, but uh, Dumsday, whoa, a little untidy himself coming up too. Knows his way out in front, conserves it. He's got this one in the bag unless something in the gremlin department hits him. Let's watch him as he comes around now. Just returned from a trip to the United States of America in Manzanita where he beat the world of outlaws and that's what tonight's all about because here tonight is the king, Steve Kinzer. He's passed car 27 from South Australia, Wayne Bunker. He's put a lap on Bunker but uh, that just shows you how quick Dumsney's going, take nothing away from Wayne. Terry Wigsell holding second place and driving very confidently. We'll have one lap to go for the leader as he comes around. The white flag being prepared. Max Dumsney, former Victoria, now residing in New South Wales and the OTR defender under the Black Magic banner goes down the back chute and the checkered flag being prepared. He goes into three. Around into turn number four. This track is magnificent. Dumsney for the win in heat number one of the Bartle Sprint Car Invitation. The second place coming around now. That's Bunker the lap car, second place will go to Terry Wigsell, car 88, third place to Jamie Moyle, car 69, the McLeod Tires car, and third place to the one and only Zeke Agars, followed by car 33, Chas Calandro, George Tatnell, behind them Dallas Dyson, and last but not least, Wayne Bunker. Max Dumsley on the screen, come out after the rain, did it well, did it strong, and is looking good. Bardell Sprint Car Invitation Heat number two, the seven times World of Outlaws King Steve Kinzer from the USA running off position number two in the Commodore's 30s number one car. And watch this guy go. He is absolutely unbelievable. In the same field, though, let me tell you, trying to get through the traffic is the seven times Australian national champion, former national champion, Gary Rush. There's Kinzer taking it easy and watch how smooth. Let's watch this guy go into turn number three. Takes a calculating, gets amongst it. We've got a crash. It's Hodgson in troubles. He's broken a front end on the Cleveland Freightliners car. Off turn number two, brought down a yellow. And what a disappointment. Rex Hodgson made the transition this season from speed cars to sprint cars and has, for the first time, as I would understand it, blotted his copybook. Bad luck for Rex. One of those things looked like a front end jump involved in it. He's now ended up out of commission up on turn two. Let's hope his crew got a spare axle for the car and we can see Rex back before the night's out because he really is a natural, smooth sprint car driver in his rookie year. 
track now cleared, restart with the king of the outlaws and the king of the world for sprint cars for that matter. Steve Kinzer rocketing back into the lead again. Second place is Gil Cameron, car number 17. Behind him, Jamie Covey, followed by Bill Ford and Gary Rush, Ian Lewis. That's the difference with distance between first and second as they come past us now. Rush trying to get a line under Porter does so. This time settles down. And Rush tonight driving an OTR, normally a gambler pilot, but driving one of the Melbourne creations of John Sidney. The leader. What more can I say about this guy? 157. I'll give it to you again. 157 feature race wins in the United States to his credit since his career started in 1977. And what a great racer. The battle for the miners going on. Rush starting to put pressure now on young Jamie Cobby. They come off too. Rush, ever the gentleman on the track, as he goes up there into turn number three. Gets it a little sideways there. Lines it up again. Sticks it in the chute. And goes down into turn number one. Rush now under Cobby. He's after car number 17. And looking good to round him up. Gil Cameron in the Jarvis Ford car as they come around the, part, the start finish line. Three and a half for remaining for Kinzer. Make that three as he comes past us now. Rush into second place. Now, Rush is not going to be silly and try and catch Kinzer. He wants to accumulate some points for the all important final here tonight. Here's Kinzer. Steve Kinzer from Bloomington in Indiana in the United States, heralded as the greatest dirt track racer since A.J. Foyt. And that is no understatement for this young man. Ian Lewis passed us now, running in fifth position. Kinzer on his last lap, the checkered flag. He goes around into turn number three. Turn number four takes it ever so easy. Checkered flag, victory, heat number two of the Bartles Sprint Car Invitation. Second over the line. Coming through now will be Gary Rush, the seven times Australian national champion. Third place, Gil Cameron, car number 17 from South Australia, followed by Jamie Cobby, car number 12 also from that state, Ian Lewis, car number 18, Victoria, in the placing behind that. There he is, the big American. Steve, Australia generally, what do you think? Well, uh, you know, uh, we've had a, it's, it's Australia's beautiful to us this time of year because back where I'm from, it's uh, about 20, 20 degrees and uh, it's a lot warmer here. Uh, we've had a little problems. The rain's been following us around just a little bit and the clouds, but we've been able to get all of our shows in. And we've been driving across the country some for a change a little bit to see the country a little more. And it's, it is a pretty good country, all except for the, the Australian salute. That's about it. <laughs> a lot of people hear about the King of the Outlaws and they hear about you and you've answered the question about a million times, I suppose. Could you tell us what you actually have to do to become King of the Outlaws? Well, uh, what, what we do is we've got a circuit uh, where we run from coast to coast. Uh, it consists of a 60 race series, and it's just a, it's just got a point system set up, and uh, the guy with the, the leads of points at the end of the year is crowned uh, the king of the outlaws. And, uh, and we've been lucky enough to win it seven times out of the nine time, nine years it's been in existence. Uh, Sammy Swindell won it the other two years. Uh, oh, I've just been lucky enough to have been involved with uh, the gambler people down in Tennessee that uh, builds uh, builds uh, racing chassis and uh, some of the better motor people involved in it, and most of all, Carl Kenzer, uh, which is a cousin of mine. Uh, he's always been involved in sprint car racing. Is probably uh, the premier uh, sprint car chassis man, and uh, and uh, he just does uh, just one fine job uh, setting a car up and, and keeping them running. His cars always finish a race, and that's what that's what does it all right there. You really think that uh, the Australian guys will be competitive tonight? Oh yeah, I'm sure they will be. Uh, they've all, from what I've seen of everybody, I've been racing against uh, 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 Gary Russ and George Tagnall and uh, Dumsey, and uh, I haven't ran against Brad Brant Lacey yet. But he come and he spent a couple of days at my house last summer, and I got to know him real well. And we went to Knoxville and stuff. And I guess he come back over here and got everything going good or good, and been running real well. Like I said, uh, there's there's going to be about five or six guys here that I know is going to run as hard. And uh, uh, like I said. Uh, they're, it's a, it's getting to the point where we're going to have to freshen up and, and get a little bit of better stuff to, to make us look as good as what we've looked in the, in the previous year. And now let's see what we can do with the Bartle Sprint Car Invitation Heat 3. We've already had a sensation before the start of the event with Randy Kinzer crashing on the 1-2 turn. Brett Lacey 
Australia number one going off into the lead. Tom Tomlinson chasing after him on your screen at the moment. Car number 97, Daryl Downing are running in fifth place. Phil March also in there somewhere, running about fourth. And the Australian champion leading off turn number two down the back straight. Challenge is coming thick and fast for the miners now. As we see Chris Blunden in car number 15. Got it there. Oh, very, very high. But contains himself, settles down. Placings thus far on your screen. You have the fifth place getter. And now the leader, Brett Lacey. Turn one, two is where it's all at. Tom Tomlinson running second behind him in car number 10. That's the Pizza Hut tuck of the Flores car on your screen now as he goes into turn three. Behind him also coming into view is Phil March. Phil March in car 78, the national speed car champion, made his transition this year into the sprinters. What a old car looking very smooth as he goes into turn three. But having with Tommy Tomlinson really got his act together and driving smooth well in the mid-track line. But nobody, and I mean nobody, with the race now five laps down, five to go, will be catching Brett Lacey unless something under the scene happens. Lacey passes now. Into turn number one he goes. Round into turn two, watching working smoothly in the cockpit of the Partridge Steel car. He goes down into turn number three. Wheels of every little which way as he lines it up, comes around past us now. Still a battle looming. Two cars in view now. Money a car of Chris Blunden and closing behind him, car number eight, Bob Ellsbury in the Adelaide Chevy Action cars. They go around the one-two turn. Laps dwindling away, one and a half to go for the champion as he comes around. Australian champion, Brett Lacey. Coming through now to receive the white flag. One remaining. Goes past Snowy White. Puts a lap on him. Backs it into turn one. Very smooth off to the back shoot. Half a lap to go for him. He's doing it on Easy Street. Shame Randy Kids wasn't out there to keep Brett honest tonight. But that's the way motor racing goes. Brett Lacey for the win in heat number three of the Barnell Sprint Car Invitation. Second across the line and a good drive too to Tommy Tomlinson, car number 10. Phil March, third place, car number 78, followed by car number 16, Gil Cameron. Closing fast behind him was car eight, Bob Aylesbury, followed by the money at car of Chris Blunden. And right behind them, car number 97, Darrell Downing. Next exciting heat, number four, the Bardell Sprint Car Invitation on the circuit, George Tatnall. Car number five from New South Wales, leading it away. Outside of him, car number 96 from South Australia. Dallas Dyson come up to the sedan this year, and they have got ten circulations of Winfield Speedway Park to the side. And all round the first turn, it looks to be... Max Dumsley's going to do it the hard way this time, won the first heat this evening, and he's going to do it from position seven. Already, he starts to move under the cloud, but over backs off, sees there could be a problem behind him, Jamie Moyle. The leader, George Tatnell, clears out down the back straight, but here comes Dumsney. Comes up there and stands on the blowout pedal, get by Calando into turn number three, he goes. Dumsney the fifth place, Tatnell clearing out. Agar's running second place as Dumsney comes up behind the fourth place getter at the moment, which is Wayne Bunker in 27, passes him on the outside into turn three. Bunker pulls it up the deck, stands on it with two feet, tries to catch Dumsney. Dumsney said, I'll have uh, Dyson as well. Dumsney now up into third place, looking good for points. Flashes down into turn number three. He's after the cars of Agar's and of George Tatnall. They're now about a quarter of a lap in front of him. There was five and a half laps remaining. Will time run out for him? That's the question. Here's Tatnall, the leader on the screen. Hey, guys. Club 63 car running second place. Here comes Dumsney. Arguably one of the fastest men on Australian dirt tracks. As I said earlier in tonight's telecast, that he was the one and only Australian this season to beat the Americans on their own home ground. Dumsney now. Not the luckiest driver around, but by, gee, the mo one of the most spectacular. Closing on Agars. Three remaining as they come past the start-finish line. Dumsney hooking it up there, raising that inside front wheel, a foot off the deck under acceleration off the turns. Fast into turn number three, gets down low. Him and Agars into three, gets Agars. Have a look at that, just that quick. 
Lap and a half to go. Can he get tackled? I doubt it. Tackle up two, but he rockets into turn number three. Dumpsty's absolutely flying, but I don't think he'll have enough to get George Tatnall. 460 metres to go. Down the back shoot they go. Tatnall there. Let's watch them. Into turn number three they go. Dumpsty on the loud pedal. But it's going to be George Tatnall's race. This is heat number four of the Bartle Sprint Car invitation to George Tatnall. Second place, Max Dumpsty from Victor, New South Wales now, beg your pardon. CK Gars in third place, followed by car 27, Wayne Bunker. 69 car of Jamie Mile, the McLeod Tyres car, followed by Dallas Dyson, Terry Wigsell, and the other man to come was Chaz Kalounder. What a race from Max Dumsney, though. Take nothing away from Tatnall. He won at fair and square. Dumsney into second place from position seven. Probably one of the best drives of the night. Get back in your seats. Please believe me, you are about to see the heat race of the night by all accounts. Ian Lewis, the Victorian champion of one, seven times national Australian champion of the second row, and Steve Ginzer, the seven times outlaw champion, coming from the back of the pack. Anything's a possibility. Ginzer getting forced back by a few uh, squirrel cars at the moment. Look at this stuff. Lewis has bolted. Rush has gone with him. Ginzer's already wrapped up three of them, and he's asked them. They're all over the place. Kenzie will give these guys a shock of their life because he is just so smooth. He's now under four of them. One's given it away. Good by Tadar. 77 car out of the deal. Lewis still from Rush in the lead. Kenzie charging through the field. Up into fourth place now. The master from America. And I really hope the fans here tonight are appreciating the great sportsman this guy is. A great athlete. Whoa! Have a look at that. That's how quick the guy reacts. Porter got him stuck, totally under control. And Kinzer's just gone straight past him. And now he's got to run down Rush and Lewis. And believe me, they're having a battle. And I've got to tell you, Kinzer is coming through like an express train. There he is on the screen. He's on the turn two. They're going into turn three. So is Kinzer now. He's slamming the bag on these guys. There is exactly five laps left to do it. Can Steve Kinzer really show us his stuff? We're about to see that because he is closing at about a third of a second a lap, I'd say. He's up behind Rush. And I've got to tell you, we are thrilled to bits. The crowd are going nuts. This will be record time nearly. These guys have got the pedal through the floor. He's caught Rush. Rush is trying to give him a run for his dollars. Here they go into turn number three. Rush driving 10 tenths. Kids are behind him. They come up into turn number one. Lewis, he's hoping, he's praying for 50 more horsepower as they go down the back shoot. There they are, throw a blanket over them, call them what you will. Two remaining, two circulations of Whitfield Speedway Park. Here goes Kinzer. Rush trying to get Lewis. Here goes Kids around the outside. Rush is holding him into turn three. Kinzer dives. Kinzer's got Rush and he's almost got Lewis. One to go. Steve Kinzer from the second back row is now going into the lead. Lewis trying to go with him. The Bennett Motors screamed in the whole brother's car. But it's the champion from America, the checkered flag. A magnificent race. The crowd rising to their feet. The race of the night. You've got to believe it. Steve Kinzer, number one in the world. First place. Take nothing away from Lewis and Rush running second and third. They give it ten tenths. The crowd giving him a massive ovation as he comes around. Well done, Steve Kinzer. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't get your money's worth out of that, you don't know what value is. That's the field. Phil March going off position number two, car 78, with a push against shoving. Away goes Phil March. Brett Lacey around the outside after him as well. He goes around Snow White. Straight into third place from the rear of the field. Phil March. Trying to settle it down on the mid-track line there. Gets his stuff together as he goes past now. Nine remaining. Brett Lacey giving chase to Tom Tomlinson. Hardridge Steel, Beretta Race chassis car goes into turn number three. And we crowned Australian champion. Won his title in Darwin in the Northern Territory. The, north, the top of Australia. March clearing out. And looking very, very tidy. 
Why the roll doors car goes into turn number one. There's second place getter Tom Tomlinson. Coca Cola Pizza Hut Channel 10. Some of the florist, Pagel Glass, all those good people that get behind Tom. Late comer in uh, racing in form of years. But certainly a very fit man. Takes his racing seriously and does it very, very well. And he's holding Brent Lacey at bay in fine style here. Settles himself down. They go past us now. Halfway there, Phil March left down to the front and really put the pedal to the metal. Brent Lacey got a lot of hard work before him to catch this man on your screen now. Car 78, Phil March into turn number one. Off turn number two, still. They, we've got her coming together, Brett Lacey and Tom Tomlinson. Coming together, turn number one. Hopefully both cars to be restarted. All eyes are on the Chief Stewart for his decision in this matter. Waiting on the Stewart's decision is going to be a very important one to see what happens, who restarts, if they restart, and what happens. Being the consistent men they are, this is the way it's to be. They're going back to their positions, which will uh, see the restart as such. And we'll see if they can all settle down again. Tomlinson's got his act together again. Blasey coming up and got him fast. Gets him this time in the back straight. And that puts pay to that. Five up on the board, according to the stewards. Four now as Phil March comes back here. And Chris Blunt on the infield with a problem with his car. The Monty car out the event. And we are watching the National Speed Car Champion being chased by the National Sprint Car Champion. Quite clear to all of you that uh, Phil March won the National Speed Car Championship here on this track at Whitfield Speedway Park last season. Now stepped up into sprint cars, driving a Australian designer built OTR and sponsored by Glider Roll Doors. Brett Lacey stepping back into sprint car racing after an absence of a couple of years. His own designer built Beretta car. And it's Phil March with one to go. Phil Mars, Brez Lazy, and Lazy's got one half a lap to catch him. And unless something goes awfully wrong for Phil Mars, he's got this one wrapped up. It's been a race of incidents. You can bet that. Phil Mars for the win. Brett Lacey second. And Tom Tomlinson very much subdued after that accident in third place. And the only other finisher, car number 11, Snow White. Ladies and gentlemen, again, good evening. and Welcome to Winfield Speedway Park. And our sincere thanks to the Bartle Company who provide those wonderful car care products and bringing us tonight the Sprint Car Invitation. What a field. Seven times World of Outlaws champion Steve Kins are going off position number one from the USA. Outside of him, South Australian champion Max Dumsney. Off the second row, the Australian champion Brett Lacey. And outside of him, the national speed car champion, Phil March. Racing into turn one, Kinza. Away there, we've got trouble, I think, further back in the field as they sort it out, but they settle down off two. Kinza streaking away. We've got them further back in the field as they settle down. Dumsty running second, March third, Lacey fourth. Ian Lewis fifth, behind that is Gary Rush. Here's the tail enders coming through. The field almost spread out after a lap, and Rush! No, it's not, it's Tatnell, I'm sorry. Tatnell kisses the boards. We've got another car broken over on turn two. It looks like Gil Cameron's brought down the first yellow. Back to 24. Will be a Indian file restart. Cameron brought down the yellow. Something wrong with the 17 car, the Jarvis Ford entry. Gil looking down there, possibly transmission or something. It doesn't appear to be anything else. Drive train let go. Bad luck for the South Australian. Jamie Moyle also stopped in the main straightaway down in front of us here with some sort of a difficulty. Jamie Moyle sitting at the start finish line has pulled up. May in fact have asked the steward was everything okay with his car. Looking for the restart this time as they come around. Steve Kinzer leading him away. There is 24 laps remaining. Only got one down before that incident with Gil Cameron. 
Diving deep into the bottom corner here. Have a look here. We've got a couple coming together. Randy Kinzer trying to get around there, and he does successfully on ZK Gars down the back chute. The leader absolutely clearing out. There'll be some fast time in the old town tonight as they go by. George Tatnall leading the second bunch, running in about seventh position at the moment. The leader coming up behind these guys already. You've got to believe this. Tom Tomlinson leaving another pack round there, and he's just been overtaken by Agars. Here's the leader. Steve Kinson from Bloomington, Indiana in the USA. And behind him, Max Dumsney from New South Wales in car number five. Fusing with Dumsney now, lives in New South Wales, drives a Victorian car, formerly from just outside of Warrnambool in the Garden State. Traffic time for Dumsney, going around cars, they're lapping him, he's chasing Kinza. Phil March running third place, Lewis in fourth, behind him Brett Lacey somewhere or other, and anybody's there, it's a go! Oh no! What is going to happen here? First and second going through traffic. Lacey behind Kinza. Locks up a wheel. Lacey slides into him. And the steward would not be feeling real good at the moment having to make this decision. The crowd rushing down to the fence. Now let's first see if we've got cars disabled here. Commodore's 30 car, Steve Kinzer, behind in the five car of Dumsney, and Brett Lacey, the Australian champion, parked sideways behind the lot of them. And we are waiting on a decision. Somebody has that unthankless task, and I'm glad it's not me. Steve Kinzer, in a sensation, is out the car, and a picture tells a thousand words. A flat inside rear tyre takes off his helmet, and that sure is a shame for Steve Kinzer. Just looks back. What's going to happen to Dumsney? $50 question. We'll see what the steward makes of this one. And believe me, this will be the hard ball. And there he is, walking dejected onto the infield. But in true Kinzer style, he'll uh, go and cool off for a minute and then he'll say, well, that's motor racing. Max Dumsney starting out of one there. Nobody seems to be, uh, nobody seems to be sending him back anywhere else. So the steward's quite happy. It was just one of those things that happened. Phil March from South Australia starting out of two. Ian Lewis from Victoria three. Brett Lacey, the Australian champion out of four. And behind him, Gary Rush. Now this has thrown the race wide open again. There is 20 laps remaining on round the 20 circulations remaining around Winfield Speedway Park. Can Dumsney do it? That's the $50 question. But Randy Kinzer is back in the field, running at this stage in seventh position. Now he had a crash early this evening. We don't know what it is. Here's the restart. This is the exciting battle, sprint car invitation and no start. We'll watch them again, recapping them for the restart with 20 to go in the Bartle Sprint Car Invitation. Max Dumsney, Phil March, Ian Lewis, Brett Lacey, Gary Rush, George Tattle and Randy Kinzer. Nice clean start this time into Turn 1 and a fast and furious pace. Lewis now trying to put pressure on March. March accelerates off Turn 2. Faster than that, here comes Brett Lacey charging up behind Lewis. Rush sitting there waiting to pounce on the lot of them. Gary Rush jetting out tomorrow morning to New Zealand to do combat over there. Randy Kins are coming through the field now further back with George Tatnall. Here's Rush working on Brett Lacey, but nobody at this stage in time is going to catch Max Dumsney, the SA champion. There's Rush coming behind Lacey. Fourth and fifth position on the circuit as we pick up the leader going up turn one, round to turn number two. 
16 and a half laps remaining for this guy. Max Dumsdy, 27 years old, now residing in Westmead in New South Wales, three times Formula 500 champion before stepping up to sprint cars about three seasons ago. Bill March, stepping into sprint cars this year in the glider roll doors car after being national speed car champion for 1986. March on your screen now, driving very consistently in, in second place. He's about six car lengths in front of the Victorian state champion, Ian Lewis. March there, looking very confident. Here's our leader. He's about four or five lengths in front of March at the moment, and March closing very fast as, late, as Dumsdy gets balked in traffic. Oh, March! March! Phil March! In trouble. In trouble. Tried to follow Dumsdy through. A pack of back markers all over the place. Balked the car. And there's the result. Phil March in the glider roll doors car. He appears to be okay. Steam gushing out the vehicle. The man's welfare first. Let's see what the result is. Doctor in attendance. We'll, might, we'll watch Mel Rosenzweig there. Spectacular flip. He's okay. He's okay. Mel Rosenzweig telling us he's okay. He's asked him, had a word with Phil, be unstrapping himself from the car. Gee, incredible stuff. The passing flag being uh, used at the time with a solid red light. Let me tell you what goes on here. If we could just watch what's happening with Phil in the car. There we are. What a wild flip. Respect to what I was saying. Following Max Dumsdy through the traffic, doing it well. And then disaster. After that excitement of losing Phil March, Dumsdy back in the lead on the restart after the red light. Into turn number one, Ian Lewis from Victoria running second. Now Brett Lacey third, Gary Rush fourth, followed by George Tatnell. That's the distance between Tatnell and Rush as they go down to the turn number three. The leader entering the straight. Turn one. It's all on again. There's Randy Kids are running fifth spot, maybe that sixth spot at the moment on the circuit. The leader Dumsdy will pick him up now. He's really hot foot, but so is Lewis and Lacey as well. Anybody's race, 12 remaining. The fortunes for Phil March changing. When he had a coming together with Bill Porter, going into turn number four, and crashing the glider roll car violently with flipping into that unknown place where he landed. The leader. Going past us now. Randy Kids has just been steamrolled by Zeke Agars. Lewis now getting pressure put on him by Brett Lacey as they come down there. We've got Kenzer out the circuit. Kenzer onto the infield in car number two. Second and thirds where the action is at the moment. We've got them both on screen. Lacey diving deep into the corner after Lewis and two Victorians. And the expatriate compatriot Victorian in Max Dumsdy now residing in New South Wales and the holder of the South Australia title in the lead. Oh, somebody. Somebody. What has happened here? Yellow lights brought down. I'm looking around the circuit. I see nothing. As I got lost words for me all, that violent flip of Phil March on turn number one. Coming together with Bill Porter, car 55 from South Australia. And sent him into no man's land was what I was trying to say. A violent flip. March coming out of it. A little groggy, but apart from that, apparently physically okay. The glider roll car, yet to be assessed. Let's hope it's not too much damage to the car because uh, repairs getting very expensive. Randy Kinzer off the circuit. Problems inside. Trying to work out what's going on here. 
absolutely beyond me. A yellow light thrown. We'll watch the start again. Jeff Ogden lets them go. Darmsney again in the lead. The action's going to be between these first three cars, but Rush now appearing on the scene. Rush, the first time out in his OTR here at Winfield Speedway Park, normally in a gambler. But the gambler across the water in New Zealand waiting for him tomorrow night. First four placing, stringing out a little bit. About four place, the four car lengths between first and second. Now we've got a spin. Chas Caloundra in the Bartle car, spun in the Bartle sprint car invitation with eight laps remaining. Round on turn number two. As I said earlier in this telecast, once or twice, this circuit was deluged with rain around about 7.20 this evening, anything up to half an inch falling, and a magnificent job by the cast and crew here at MJS Racing Promotions at Winfield Speedway Park to get this track in super quick condition. Commented by the Kinsers before, fabulous. But alas, both the Kinsers out the event. Steve first going out after coming together with Max Dumpsey, the leader at the moment. And Randy Kinser obviously still suffering problems from that earlier heat mishap where he spun the car in hot laps. George Tattle in trouble. Gets it together again. Zeke Agar, as quick as a flash, driving very well here tonight, I must comment. Up into fifth position. Lewis trying to challenge Dumsney. Ian Lewis, second year in sprint car racing, Victorian Rookie of the Year last year. Also came up from the speed car ranks, driving for the Peter Hoare establishment in Geelong, Victoria. Dumsney in the Black Magic, Clayman's Auto Electric's car, going into turn number three, round into four. There's a distance between the two of them. The leader now, four and a half rotations remaining. Dumsney into turn three. Dumsney, Lewis, Lacey and Rush, that's the order they're going in. Three and a half remaining. Dumsney, maybe a car length away further from Lewis on that lap. Really coming home strong thus far. The back marker's spreading out. Lewis charging again, coming back at him. Down the back chute they go. Two and a half remaining. Two circulations, one half of a mile for these guys. The checkered flag being prepared for the finish of the Bartle Sprint Car Invitation as Dumsney flies down the back chute. Oh, he gets a tiny Lewis! Lewis goes underneath him, Dumsney's popped the tyre! Dumsney's broken an outside, an outside front tyre. He and Lewis half a lap to go. He and Lewis, Tomlinson spun on four. Lewis coming round for the checkered flag. He and Lewis in an upset victory here. Brett Lacey second. Gary Rush in third place. Dumsney staggering around. Luck out to dinner again for this guy. What has this fella got to do to win a feature race? Arguably the fastest racer in Australia, but he's missed out, but take nothing away from Ian Lewis as we're picking up, coming off turn number four. He's taken this out, car number 18 from Victoria, the Victorian champion. He's won the Bartle Sprint Car Invitation, a lap of victory. Goodness gracious me, Brett Lacey, the Australian champion, second. And Gary Rush in third place in Australia, too. And what else can I say? Uh, found it easy. We uh, had a bit of trouble with the heat, set the car up, and didn't change a lot. And uh, we're all happy we never. Yeah, the track come in uh, like we hoped it would. Congratulations, Ian. The blue sash for you, mate. Terrific stuff. What a great night. What an end. What a result. We've seen some hard luck stories tonight. We certainly have. We've seen the world's greatest races here tonight. I'm a little hoarse from it. I'm a little excited. For any of you who aren't back there, you really don't know what good value is. In the background, we see the presentations to the winners. Commiserations to the losers. That's motorsport. Thanks for joining us here at Winfield Speedway Park for another great night of racing. And we'll look forward to seeing you soon.